Welcome to my studio. I'm an artist. My name is Leonard Kozianski. And today I'd like to talk to you about a painting that I did a few years ago called Cardinal Course. My family has a family tradition. Golf. All three of my brothers play golf, and all three of them are very good. Here's a picture of my brother Jack teeing off. He's really good. Once a year, we travel to some sometimes exotic location for a family golf tournament. I'm the worst golfer in the family. I always get the lowest score. My brothers do very well. So here we are at my brother's house, which happens to be on the Twelve Oaks Country Club in North Carolina. And we had just finished playing a round of golf at Pinehurst, a golf course nearby. And of course, they did very well. They allow me to play along with them. I try not to hold them back too much. There I am. Um, and they're very indulgent in allowing me to play along with them because they are so good. But it was natural at a certain point that I would begin to do some drawings uh, in preparation, perhaps, for a painting about golf itself. So here in my sketchbook is a page of drawings, gesture drawings, of a golfer hitting a ball. This led to a compositional study in lieu of a painting or in preparation for a painting. And here we have some golfers on a golf course. Now, there was something about this study that seemed incomplete. I thought it was a bit of a failure. Golf courses are very curious places. They're very natural, but they're very unnatural at the same time. They're paradoxical. They take nature and manicure it and sculpt it to create this sort of very contrived environment in which people play golf. And golf is sort of the modern American equivalent of riding to the hounds. It's a really interesting game. It's very rule-bound, very tradition-bound. There are a lot of traditions and rules and courtesies. And so in this study, uh, the next study that I would do, uh, I began with the golf course, but then I brought in an element of nature, a bird, a wild bird, into the picture. Because nature, wild nature, does intrude into this golf course setting. I mean, there's the wind and the rain, and there are their animals and uh, insects. And so, you know, the golf course is natural and, and very unnatural at the same time. And that's a, an, a very interesting uh, sort of cultural expression, cultural manifestation that we have. I love just looking at golf courses. They can be so picturesque. They're designed to be very picturesque, as well as challenging for the golfer. In this next study, uh, the cardinal became more prominent, and uh, the, the idea of the painting is progressing. Uh, the golfers and the golf course is becoming the context, the setting for this sort of natural occurrence. Of course, it was necessary for me to uh, do more studies of golfers and, and golf poses. Uh, I don't even know how to take the correct pose when I'm playing the game, and yet I had to draw the correct pose of a golfer seen from above, and this took a number of attempts. This was the final study that I would use for the painting, and because I was going to be blowing it up from a 5 by 7 inch pen and ink study to a 30 by 40 inch painting, it was necessary for me to draw a pencil grid over the drawing just so to, to help me blow it up. Now, as I said, uh, you know, there, this drawing is preceded by other studies. And in doing my final study, I went back to this previous study, I photocopied it, and then I drew on top of 
that photocopy with a ballpoint pen and a whiteout pen to create my final compositional sketch. Which just demonstrates that in art, there really are no failures. Everything is based on what went before. Every attempt, if you stick to it, every attempt leads to the next attempt. I never throw anything out because I never know when something that I've done before is going to be the basis for what I'm going to do today. So in art, there really are no failures. In fact, successful pictures are really just a series of failures, a series of corrections, a series of edits. Here is the finished painting, Cardinal Course, and here we see the predator and the prey in this sort of pristine park-like golf course setting. Technically, it was fairly involved. As many of my paintings are, it's painted in layers. And the first layer is a charcoal line drawing of the sketch, of the compositional sketch. I then go over that charcoal line drawing with ink lines, brush and ink, that I paint on over the charcoal. And then I allow that ink to dry. Then I smear a tone, a, a single color, over the whole canvas. And because the ink is water-based and the paint is sort of turpentine-based and oil-based, when I smear that tone over the ink lines, they don't dissolve, they don't smear. I mean, if I were to wipe over those lines with a wet rag, they would. But because the tone is a, uh, an oil-based paint, it doesn't smear the ink lines underneath. So how do I make a tone? Well, I mix the color that I'm going to use, in this case a reddish brown, and then I take a rag, dip it in paint thinner, dip it into the paint, and then smear that color over the whole canvas. I spread that color over the whole canvas with the turpentine soaked rag, which I dip in the paint. And that creates the tone that I then use to build the other colors on top of. And I'm using a reddish brown tone because most of the colors that I will put on top of it are the opposite of a reddish brown. They're blues and greens. And so here's the painting. Early on, uh, we can still see a lot of the tone showing through, but on top of that, I'm blocking in the blues and the greens that the painting will ultimately have. And the blues and greens represent the grass and the trees and the sky and the water. I'm also beginning to articulate some of the forms in the trees. This is the finished painting in full detail. We have the predator and the prey in this park-like setting. Up close, we see the golfers hitting out of the, here's the golfer hitting out of a sand trap. Another golfer holds the pin for him. And that holding of the pin has lots of rules and traditions behind it. And here is the ball about to pop into the hole. And when I was painting the ball, I had to paint the dimples on that golf ball. And that wasn't easy. And we can't really see them in this photograph, but they're there in the painting. In the middle ground, we have uh, the cardinal, this, this wild bird, this wild natural bird, uh, the predator chasing this dragonfly, the prey, and it was a challenge to paint that glint in the cardinal's eye, as well as the veins in the, car in the dragonfly's wings, and then to try to get that transparency, that transparent effect in that cardinal's back wing with the light shining through the feathers. In the distance, we have the golf course. And at the bottom of this detail, we can see a group of golfers on a green putting. Behind them are a 
pair of golfers teeing off on a par three hole. And behind them, we have a pair of golfers standing in the middle of a fairway about to hit their ball. And next to them is a golf cart. And that's the other curious thing about golf courses is that everyone rides around in these little cars, these little electric cars. Uh, they don't walk the course, they, they drive the course. And of course, on a lot of golf courses, we have houses built right alongside the golf course. And those houses are in great demand because avid golfers love living on a golf course. They love being able to walk out their back door and be right on the golf course and playing their favorite game. Of course, I've talked to other people who aren't golfers who have lived on a golf course and they get really tired of golfers walking through their backyard trying to find their balls and having golf balls hit their windows. And so it's kind of a, a, a double-edged sword. Uh, and then behind the houses are, are this hill, are the hills covered with trees and behind that, the sky with those fleecy clouds. Golf courses are very interesting places. They're very park-like, very contrived, made to look beautiful and made to be very challenging for the golfers who are playing the golf course. For me, this painting was a technical challenge because how do you paint sand in a sand trap? How do you get the texture of the sand as well as the color of the sand? Well, in this case, I painted the sand first with little dots of white paint, pure white paint which I then allowed to dry. And then, after that was dry, I glazed a thin layer of a light brown to create the sand color, thereby getting the sand texture and the sand color at the same time. Here's the finished painting. 30 by 40 inches, oil on canvas, and I let it dry, I varnished it, and then I photographed it. I photograph all of my artwork. I then took the photograph of this painting and posted it online on my website and on some social media sites. I'm a professional artist. It's important for me that my artwork go out into the world and interact with the lives of other people, that it be enjoyed, appreciated, looked at, uh, by others. Well, shortly after posting this picture online, I got a call from my gallery in New York, in Soho, the Louis Mizell Gallery. A collector had seen my painting or photograph of my painting online and they wanted it for their collection. So the gallery called me up and I immediately framed the painting, boxed it up and sent it to the gallery where they sold it to the collector. And the collector hung it in their home, in their collection, where it could be seen, interacted with by all the members of their family and their friends, some of whom are golfers. So the painting start off with golfers and ends up with golfers. Thank you for letting me talk to you today about how this painting evolved and some of the technical challenges involved in creating it. Thanks for watching this video. If you like this video, be sure to subscribe, like and share.